Okay, so finally, the May update for Adobe XD has dropped. It's been teased quite a bit by Mr. Shorten, Mr. Pinsky, Mr. Wadsworth, and a few others, but it's finally here, and I'm gonna cover in this video everything that is new for Adobe XD. And I'm gonna have to make this video super snappy because, uh, well, the camera I'm filming on has got about 8% left because somebody didn't remember to charge the battery last night. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this video, we're gonna go through everything that is new for Adobe XD in the May update. So this is really exciting. This, this is a big one. This is the biggest update for XD we've had this year. And if you don't know, Adobe XD is a wireframing, prototyping and design application. It's free to download. So um, yeah, if that interests you, then go download it and have fun. But we're gonna jump into it now. I'm gonna go through everything that is new in this update. Ooh, it's synchronized. Point speaking. But anyway, we're gonna to jump to the screen now and I'm gonna show you everything that is part of this May update. Right here, so first on the list, we have create and maintain a design system. Now a design system, if you don't know, is kind of like, it's more than a style guide. It's like a, a visual language, a visual language for designers. So you might have uh, UI styling, icons, um, different assets, patterns, graphics, fonts, typography, copy, animation, layout, all this different stuff. These things that is not only incredibly useful for brands, but really helpful for a large scale project when you've got multiple designers all designing for the same thing. You can kind of have this one source of truth, this place that you can just pull it all together. That is your design system and it just makes everything easier, faster and more consistent. And as it says here, you can do this predominantly with linked assets, components. Components are what were symbols before. So symbols are gone. They are now components and have a lot more flexibility. And also cloud documents that can be shared and updated in real time. So incredibly useful if you're part of a design team, you can now essentially just all work together at the same time from that same master document, that design system. So like, this is, this is huge, this is really cool. Okay, next on the list, we have keyboard and gamepad triggers. So this is awesome. You can use your keyboard or the gamepad triggers on your Xbox One or your, your PS4 controller. You can actually use those to now interact with your prototype. So if you're coming up with like a game concept or something, or maybe like a going through like a menu of a game, the menu UI, then you can now actually interact with this with a controller. So it's just kind of making that prototype, which isn't a real world end product, but you're just making it feel more believable. Being able to put that in someone's hands with an actual controller and say, well, there you go, have a little play through this, see how you find it and really kind of get feedback, real, like real feedback with someone using a controller on how they find using that experience, that menu, whatever it is, like, it's just amazing. And me personally, I'm, I'm a bit of a gamer, so I kind of want to try and create something now that fuses UI design with a game somehow. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but maybe some sort of menu or something. And then I can actually like link it all up and play through it with a controller. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Going to be pretty fun. We've also got voice prototype notifications. So if a prototype isn't responding to a particular voice command, you can actually figure out what's gone wrong. So you'll get like a, a visual preview of what is actually being heard by XD. So um, if you're not talking proper, then uh, it's gonna come up and probably show you where you're going wrong. At least that's my interpretation of that. I've not tried it out yet, but that's gonna be pretty useful if you can't get a voice command working or anything like that. Okay, next we've got components with overrides. Now this is kind of ties into what I was talking about with design systems and actually probably contender for one of my favorite features in XD. Like I think auto animate is the, the top spot. That is my favorite. It's just, it's really cool. In terms of my favorite features that are like very functional and massive time savers, this is it. So as I mentioned, a component is the new name for a symbol. Symbols before you could kind of create a symbol and then you could reuse that symbol through an entire project. And then if you update that symbol, it updates every instance. So that is cool. It was really helpful, but components, Components are far more flexible and they also come with overrides. And what you can do now is if you create a new component or you want to like edit an existing component, you can just make a master out of it so it becomes like the master component and then you can 
take that and propagate it through your entire document as you did before with symbols. But the real difference here, the huge uh, kind of increase in flexibility is that you can now do component overrides. So let's say I have a button. I've got a button, it's blue with some text on it, and then I paste that throughout my entire document. Now, if I wanted to make one of those buttons on one particular artboard, maybe a bit taller, a bit wider as well, well, I can actually do that and it will be a component override. So I'm overriding the component, but Adobe XD still recognizes that it's pulling from this master component. So for example, if I had Arial as the font on all of these buttons and I changed it to Times New Roman, I don't know why I would do that, but if I wanted to do that, it would still update that font change across everything. But the fact that I've made this one button deeper and wider, it would respect that and leave that unaltered. So essentially you can have something that is a component still link back to like this master version over here. But if you make individual changes to certain elements, it will respect that and it will keep those unchanged. But if you update something else, like an attribute that you haven't changed yet, it, that will get propagated to every instance of that component. So that's why they're just so much more flexible. And I've been using this on a project recently and it's just whew, the biggest time saver ever. Now the next one, you're gonna love this, guides. We've got guides. A lot of people have been asking for them since the beginning. They are finally here. Artboard guides, you can drag them out from the left edge or from the top edge. Drag your guides out. It very easily with the smart guides makes it simple to just measure things up. And then you can copy and paste them from artboard to artboard just so uh, if you want to keep everything lined up, you want to have guides in your document, there you go. Guides in XD are finally here. Next on the list, we can request access to private prototypes and design specs. So if you've got a project and you've shared this or the link and someone tries to access it but they haven't got permission, they can now request permission from you to view your prototype. And you can then either go, yep, that's absolutely fine or no, denied, you will not be viewing the prototype. So uh, that's pretty cool. We've also got responsive resize for components. So remember symbols before, you couldn't really resize a symbol without it resizing everything. But with components, they're just so much more flexible and you can actually now resize components with responsive resize. So for example, you have a, a header, a mobile header. You've got your menu icon, your title, and your search icon. This is a component. Remember components are what symbols used to be and you can then copy and paste that component onto a tablet, stretch it out with responsive resize, and it still stays as a linked component. You could then do that for a desktop version as well, copy and paste that component, stretch it out, and it's all still the same. So if you then replaced, let's say the menu icon with a different design, that still gets updated across everything, even though you've stretched it out to fit different sizes like mobile, tablet, and desktop. Like, it's amazing. Like, it's gonna be such a massive time saver. And next, we've got the polygon tool. This essentially allows us to create triangles, pentagons, hexagons, octagons. In fact, shapes up to 100 sides. I don't know if shapes with 100 sides actually have a name, like a hun hundredagon? something like that. But yeah, you can use this to create shapes of multiple sides. You just create the shape with the polygon tool and then you can adjust the number of sides over in the property inspector on the right. That's my, my right, your left. The, the property inspector will be on this side of the screen. Now another new feature is linked assets. This kind of ties back into the whole design system thing. So you can have assets now, components, whatever it is, as part of a document and then other designers who may be sharing this document on the cloud with you, they can access that and they can copy and paste those linked assets into their document. So they're actually using assets from this kind of master document, this design system perhaps. So everything is just linked together and connected. And then if something is updated, for example, if some styling changes, then the person who has the kind of linked version can choose if they want that update to come through. So it just kind of holds everything together, all the different assets that are being used by different people in a team, they're just all linked together now and it just makes everything just more consistent overall and easier to manage and maintain like a larger scale project. And lastly, I'm gonna run through this one really quickly because my camera's almost out of battery. Have we got time to finish this? XD now includes support for uppercase, lowercase, title case, and strike through in the XD design application and in web and mobile previews. So yeah, we get a few more different text related options over on the property inspector on the right, which is 
my left. And if you'd like to check out all of these features in a little bit more detail, then there is a link down here, learn more, click on this, and it will load up this blog page here. In fact, I will link this in the video description if you'd like to check out all of these new features in a bit more detail. So we've got the blog post here, we can scroll down and we have a little bit more detail about each of the new features with an accompanying video. So if you want to check this out right now and learn about a specific thing or just watch all the videos and learn about everything, then this blog post is gonna cover that. But there we go, that wraps up this super quick video for Adobe XD's May update. Pretty huge update, like I say, the biggest one this year. The camera is telling me we're out of battery, so I'm gonna try and wrap this up really quickly. If you do have any questions or comments, please do drop them down below. As always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you next time.